Hi, I'm Uzair Karawala and welcome to the Masters of Light webinar series. This webinar series is presented by Kevin Wilson, Martin Graham Dunn and myself. This webinar series includes six 60-minute webinars and topics including the essential elements of composition. What is composition? Negative and positive space, cropped or full frame. You learn all the essentials of composition. Understanding light is the key to taking great images. Learn how to see the light and get the best out of any situation. Most photographers struggle with the art of posing. Kevin and Martin discuss and showcase simple yet effective ways to pose your subject. Did you know YouTube is the second largest engine in the world and the third biggest website? Find out how to generate free traffic to your site. Most photographers fail miserably at driving free traffic to their website. I'll share some incredible tips and tricks which will not only enhance your Google rankings but also draw visitors to your website for free. You'll learn all about keyword research, short and long tail keywords, exact, broad and phrase match, who your competitors are and all about search engine optimization. Taking the flash away from the camera is the secret to great flash photography. In this session, you learn how to set up and control flash very easily to create stunning images. You receive over 360 minutes of world-class tuition. No matter where you are in the world, you will get instant download links to download the webinars to your computer. Checkout is completely secure and you may pay by PayPal, Visa or MasterCard. Still not convinced yet? Let's take a look at what people are saying. A fantastic way to learn from home. Jennifer Richardson Absolutely brilliant. Must be bargain of the year by Terry Wallace. Want more? Let's take a look at what's inside. With the element essential elements of composition. So Martin, can I hand okay. you over? Okay then. Right. Well, good afternoon everybody in uh, the UK and Europe and uh, good morning to everybody in the United States that's listening. I hope you uh, enjoy this little offering that the three of us have uh, put together. Um, and as Oz says, don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, Kevin and I particularly have been in the game long enough to know there's no such thing as a stupid question. And as I say, no such thing as a bad student, only bad teachers. So we're here to try and help you in every way we can. So, what are the essential elements of composition? Well, there are several. Okay. Now, a point, the point, the point of view. What does that mean? Well, every good image has to have a point of view. Now, with a portrait or a wedding picture, it's fairly obvious that needs to be the individual or the couple themselves or the subject of the portrait. But it doesn't always hold that way for something like a landscape or various other uh, types of uh, composition and, and uh, subjects. Arms, legs, and you extend the scene from there onwards. Well, so it should be very much with an image. So, Kevin, can I ask you a question? Um, for cropping purposes, what would you advise the camera resolution or your sensor resolution to be? Could you go in quite close or cropped in at camera with cameras with a lower resolution? Well, obviously you've got to know the limitations of your camera and the sensor. Now, I'm using Canon 1DS Mark III's and they've got uh, 22 megapixels. So yeah. I, can, I can go in quite close. So if you look yeah. at the image, uh, the full frame image, and then we've gone in and we've done the square, and then we've got an upright, and there's just so many things that you can do, and it works in, in each and every way. 
And you okay, know, yeah. as Martin said, about thirds. It's no good getting your thirds right if, if you haven't got an interesting composition. But it works so well in all these three instances. One is the overall view, one is a, a square, and one is an upright. But because I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and I had yeah. the blind looking out of the picture, yeah. I was able to make those three pops from it. Okay. Okay, let's move I on. think one of, one of the major things, Martin, is to, to make sure you allow enough space around an image. Absolutely. No space, no opportunities for sub-image cropping. So take and one step back. So often. Yeah. Step back. Yeah. Step back. Use the environment. Cool. Thank you. Okay, Martin, let's carry on. Okay, well, in front of you now, you see there's a, an image, basically a, a U.S. senior-style portrait. Now, my American friends can understand this perfectly, what seniors market's about. It doesn't yet particularly exist in the United Kingdom and Europe, but uh, I can promise you it will do fairly soon. Um, but every image, no matter what you do, whether it's whether it is in, a, in on location, uh, whether it's a wedding picture, whether it's a portrait in the studio, there are important compositional factors. So let's just move on and and have a little play with what we see. Now what you're seeing now, guys, is a rule of thirds template stuck over the top of the image. Now there's a big problem with this. If you take it back off, the image is still pleasing. You put it on. Unfortunately, a point of interest will not ever exactly lie on an intersection of lines. Um, so it's really to put forward the fact that it is a notion, not a hard and fact rule. There is no, there are no real rules in photography, guys. There are laws of light and there's physics of light. There is inverse square law, etc., etc., etc. But rule of thirds, golden means, they're all notions. And if you look at their origins, it's uh, it's very, very difficult to retrospect. Right, two different why. meanings, one in photography and one in art, and yet they both cross reference. This is um, a guy that really hated having his photograph taken, and but he wanted something special. And I walked around the hotel in reverse because I normally go to a hotel and I find that I go to the same location. But if you go to the same location and you go around in an opposite direction, you usually find things and see different types of light. And I just uh, found this gymnasium, which uh, I thought was quite interesting. Love the colour. And if you look at it, the groom is dead central, so it's quite symmetry, symmetrical, but he's got interesting composition above him. But I would call that negative space. So what well, this is a massively powerful image. It's full of interest. It's full of story. And uh, the placement of Kevin's hand, or the hands that Kevin on the, on the subject, have actually given strong indications that every single piece of this composition is, is important to the overall finished effect. So it's not just the point of communication through the final clear square with the guy's head there. It's the hands that were their place. It's the body shape. It, you, it's almost like having great big fingers and pointing that you've got to look here. And this is an image that is positive in, in numerous ways. Positive space, it lies with us in the foreground, but in every way, every component within this picture is exciting. It's living. It's okay. very much alive. What is critical edge composition? Well, we could go on and on about this, but it's a very sym symmetrical composition again, as a lot of my work is. And the bride is dead central, and the bridesmaids are running backwards and forth in the background. And the one thing that you, you must not do is, again, lose the top of those arches. So anything that's important within the image has to be in it. For example, if I come up and crop through her veil, that she's probably spent three or four hundred pounds on, that to me would ruin the picture. The same mm -hmm. as if I cut off the top of the, the arches within the doorway. So what do you think, Martin? I mean, this, this is one of my uh, favorite pictures you ever shot, Kevin, for a lot of reasons. And it's, it's, it's incredibly skillful as much as the bride is pin sharp, absolutely pin sharp. Um, I mean, my God, the dress is impressive yeah. enough. But the arch... This is the one that um, I said earlier on, is achieving the simplicity. You know, do the easy thing first. This is the same location as the other one with, where the negative space works really well. But this one, to me, is a lot softer and sensitive image as opposed to the previous one, which is a lot more confident. So, but this is the type of thing I would do first before I start to do anything graphic and too much. I will always do the simple thing first and then move on because this builds confidence into your client. 
yeah. cannot too strongly um, support Kevin on this that KISS, keep it simple, stupid is where you need to, to start from. And, and it's like every type of, of like making a, like a building. If you have a solid foundation, your building becomes it's firm and stable. And, as and the, it sends you as well. Yeah. Shows off the gown beautifully. That is a good point, Oz, because if, if Kevin had lifted the knee and put the toe on point, it would have looked incredibly contrived. The beauty of this is that the image is believable. It looks like the girl, for whatever reason, if you think life is a stage, the whole thing about images is that images that have a story in them, or your ability as a viewer to make a story up about them, so it does something for you is incredibly important. Now I look at this as an image and, and as a judge and I say, wow, yeah, I, I can take into account all the technical elements that Kevin's done mm -hmm. there and the you're on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why off camera flash? Right. So here we go. Um, best practice always says keep your light source away from the lens. There's nothing more unattractive than direct on camera flash. Heavy shadows shadows on faces, very, very sharp uh, pinpoint lights in the eyes. It just flattens everything. It's not what it's about. Lighting is about how you sculpt, mold, shape, and tone the subject themselves for aesthetic reasons. It's our job to make people look good. So get that light source away from the lens. And as it says on the next point, directional lighting is everything. Move the light source, be it flash, be it video, be it quantum, no matter what it is, be it a, a light bulb site, I can actually place multiple speed lights in positions where I can backlight, side light, rim light, as well as frontally lighting from a, quite a distance. And for me, it's important to be able to light from a distance as well. Yeah. So before we start, let me go through my setup. Um, James, I think it was, who ask whether I use a softbox or an umbrella. As you can see from these setup shots, um, there's a light to light easy box and I've got the umbrellas over here as well. Now last year I was fortunate enough or unfortunate enough, whichever way you want to look at it, to work in extreme climate from minus 30 degrees centigrade to plus 30. Uh, from the extreme cl cold climate in the uh, 250 kilometers above the Arctic Circle uh, right down to the hot weather in Malaysia. Now the problem in the Arctic Circle is where we were there are only uh, three modes of transportation. One is your two legs, the other one is uh, on the dog sledge and the third one is a snowmobile. So you've got to keep your equipment to a bare, bare minimum and that, that's what I took. My stand umbrella and a softbox and with this easy to carry uh, Lester light lighting kit this has got a tripod, an umbrella and a couple of black lights in there because you will never ever use them all at one go. 90% of my work is shot with one flash and that's it because keep it simple and myself and Martin you know will keep on saying this like a broken record the simple you keep it, the better results you're going to achieve. So it's no point in going out there buying you know, loads and loads of kit. Mm. Three other ways to control your flash guns if you've got a pop of flash. Um, the Nikon bodies have the cap capabilities of triggering the remotes through your pop of flash. You can control, use a master flash of a SB800 or a 900. But this is my personal favorite, SU-800 Commander. It's very lightweight, very quick and easy to set up and control the remotes. And they work on the infrared principle, so especially when you are shooting outdoors, you've got to be very, very careful that you have the line of sight. In five years, Definitely. I have been using these flash guns. I have never, ever come back disappointed that, damn, I should have taking my pocket wizards or use it uh, taking my studio lights because yes there is some limitations to this flash gun so I tend to work to the strength of the system and not to the weakness so if I can't shoot from 10 meters away I'll shoot from 9 meters away you know there's always a way around it and the you know the portability of the system and 
the way I can use, set up and shoot very, very quickly is incredible. I mean, this was for an engagement shoot. It took me no more than half an hour from the start till the end, including setup of the flash guns and packing up of the flash guns. So I can work very, very quickly, very easily. Martin, before we go on to the next slide, I'll just go through a couple of quick questions. Uh, Robert is asking, to get started with the CLS, would you recommend the SU Commander over getting another SB900? Um, Robert, I personally would go, if I was you, I would go for an SU800 Commander unit. It is very, very lightweight because if you've got a heavy body like a D3 or a D3S and you put on a SB900 on your hot shoe, uh, think at the weight and the shutter speed. speed. And this is why paying a few more pounds or a little bit more for a pro body is absolutely important for me to be able to sync at any shutter speed. Because Martin, when you are shooting in bright daylight, this is the problem you will get to balance yeah. the flash with the Indian flight, won't you? I mean, I find that I mean, the 700 is a great piece of kit. Yeah. Um, and, and it's very much, um, you know, that will give you everything you need to have. And as you say, Oz, it's better to spend a little bit more money. And the same with the, the 5D Mark II. So when you start getting to the 700 and the 5D Mark II, then everything from there upwards will handle it perfectly. I'm not quite sure what the capabilities are with the 300 and 300S. Uh, you would yeah. know better than me on that now, Oz. I'm a bit out of touch. Yeah. Um, but uh, well, I would imagine you would still deal with high-speed sync. I've got a question for you, Martin. John Harris is asking, so why use an umbrella at all if there's a better light form with uh, EasyBox? Well, I've got to say it's my personal preference. Um, I, great I shot. Uh, that's why I wanted to show everyone how easy it is to set up and shoot. And when you the, took this shot, you know, it, it was a bit nerve-wracking or a bit nervous that how I'm going to control the off-camera flash. And within three or four shots, you know, she was up and running. And the good thing about setting your exposure in manual mode, say, where, for example, we are shooting under a tree, the light, the ambient light is not going to change quite a lot. So if I set my exposure, and I can shoot all day long, because I don't need to worry about zooming in, zooming out, including a bit more sky in my images, my exposures will be consistent and my workflow will be how because you've got to get it right in camera. Um, don't think that mm, I'm going to sort it out later on in Aperture or Lightroom, otherwise you'll just be stuck in front of the computer all day long. I've got a few questions from As Kevin you Norman see Williams. A lens hood. Your eyes will take in all the peripheral light that you can see. Okay, you will never be able to effectively assess that light unless you put your hand over the top of your eyes, shielding them and preventing light falling down. As then you'll see the effect that you want to get. Then place your light accordingly, give some shape, form, and texture, and away you go. Yeah. Okay. I've got a few. I'm going to answer some few questions. Um, Kevin Jones is asking: Would it not be easier to just use the camera or the pop-up flash of the camera to fire the remote flash guns? I was looking to get a commander unit so that I could use my two SB900s off camera. Then I discovered that I can do the same thing with my D700 without an external extra unit. Absolutely, you can control the ex um, the two or more than two SB900s off camera flash with through your pop up flash. The only thing which I find is going if you when you want to change the output of the flash guns, you need to go into the commander uh, on the menu flash menu. And that is you just can tell this time, time I'm broad lighting this young lady from yeah. an equal distance. Yeah, again, you can tell by the 105 F2 where uh, I'm, I'm a considerable way away. And here shooting at very, very wide aperture. This is actually shot at around 2.2, which means yeah. that, yet again, this is where high speed sync really comes into its own. And the amount of power that you actually need to produce from your SB800 or 900 is so minimal that your battery usage will enable you to shoot until the cows come home. And that is, that is quite a factor when you're going out on location. You don't want to be changing your batteries every five minutes. 
the same way as you didn't want to change, change them when you're up in the Arctic Circle, the ISO tower. Um, yeah. We do want to get maximum efficiency out of our kit. And yeah. there's nothing worse than running out of battery power on a shoot. Exactly. It's deeply embarrassing. Yeah. So, okay. Power okay, this is about balance. And this, to me, is, is, uh, is a modified quantum. It's going through a softbox. So you can see that it is virtually shadowless illumination, but balanced with the ambient light in the building. There is one kicker panel or reflector off the camera right. And you can see that because if you look at the girl right almost off middle of the set the shot with a hand close to her face, um, you can see the way the light is coming in from the side, kicked off the panel. So I'm effectively feathering with the quantum, with the softbox, which is kind of, you know, it's 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 more or less over my right shoulder. So I'm coming in, so the subject to camera left is more broadly lit, the one to center is short lit, and it leaves the Marilyn look-alike there just with a nice even level of illumination on there. Um, this is about balance. You can see there's no deep shadows, there is no giveaway. To light carefully with your off-camera lighting, with it be it quantum, be it speed lights, whatever you want to use, it is essential that there is this believability. And, and I really do not like, personally, like the cutout the feel on the subject, and not the highlight and the rest of the image. If you're exposed to that, let the rest of it take care of itself, and you'll be perfectly okay. Yeah. So all I'm worried about are the details in the sky. And all these images were shot within 30 minutes. I had even a timekeeper, Henry, uh, shouting five minutes every five minutes because it was a very, very expensive exercise we took. And when I told my colleagues at Nikon um, that let's shoot inside the London Eye and have a race against time, uh, the first thing I was told is, are you mad? Because things can go horribly wrong, especially with all this glass reflecting flash. And the problems you can have with how much ambient light is going to be or how bright or how dark it may be. Um, and I had never shot with a 14 to 24 before on a FX or full frame body. But the shoot went really well, as you can see from these uh, setup shots, how bright it is and how dark my ambient light is in the background. So you underexpose the ambient light, bring in the flash, and light your subject. And this kind of images you can only take when you have total control on your exposure. You just cannot set your exposure to TTL or program mode. Otherwise, the camera will, camera and the flash will look at that subject or the whole image and fire a bit of fill-in flash to give you a nicely lit image. But when you want to do something creative, you've got to control how much ambient light is going through your do the lens and how much flat E3, D3S is, or all the uh, Canon bodies which are I think going upwards from 5D Mark II, I believe, can sync. Yeah. If somebody can ping in uh, in the question box, anybody using uh, the Canon 5D Mark II or above. Bit of fell-in flash. It was very, very bright in the sun, sun uh, in the direct sunlight, uh, midday sun. Came in a bit of shade, and I fired in a light. You can, Martin mentioned that there is a gadget which takes on four flash guns. Now this is a clamp which is made by Lestolite and it allows you to put up three flash guns. And that's really handy to have, especially when I've got such a strong uh, midday sun. And now you can see the true Very. portability of the system. I can be in the water, on the beach, up on the hills, in the snow. It doesn't matter. I can. I have the same uh, lighting kit with me all the time. So my first shot got loads of. I took. I saw the sky is losing a bit of color in it. And she's the makeup artist who I requested to just handhold the flash gun. And on a lot of shoes, I will ask somebody to just handhold the flash gun uh, for me. I don't need to put them up on a live stand or any fancy gizmos or gadgets, just handheld will do fine. When you are using infrared, just make sure that the sensor on the flash gun is not obstructed by the fingers or the thumb. 
and that is it. Um, I took the shot. Now I can't scream at that girl. Look, can you please put the power up or down because she doesn't know anything about flash guns. So I took the shot, had a look. I up underexposed the ambient light by bumping up my shutter speed a little bit higher and cutting down the output of the flash. Now the more light, you practice, when you're split lighting, Martin, would you use a reflector on the other side of the face or not? Well, that's that is a well, that is actually a matter of preference in terms yeah. of how much reflection that you use. Yeah. Sometimes it's quite nice just to open the shadow areas just a little mm. bit. Bear in mind that um, a split bit image is usually yeah. done for drama and theatre. Uh, yeah. I mean, in terms of its effect, uh, yeah. and therefore the amount of fill how yeah. much the shadows are opened up can be yeah. negligible. Okay, yeah. Cool. And the last one, beauty. And the last one is beauty lighting. Beauty lighting uh, comes mostly from, from the fashion and advertising world, and it works on the maxim of eyes yeah. and the camera in, in the right position and bisect the angle between head and feet, depending on how far back you come. Now, yeah. it's important then to get the light at a good height above, and you can see that your light's in the right position by the position of the capture lights. Now, one yeah. very, very important thing to say now, this lighting essentials thing, the pattern you see now, it, it applies just as much to working outside as it does with artificial light or studio flash. Yeah, okay. The principles but, are the same. Yeah, but you know, with Kevin, when you photograph with available ambient light or with sunlight, Obviously, you don't have that luxury of you know putting the light in the right place. So, is that a skill which the photographers really need to master of how to yeah. use the light the best yes, way? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And on any given assignment you're out on, wedding, portrait, wherever it might be, you know you cannot always get perfect lighting conditions. You have to yeah, modify it and bend it to to suit yourself. Okay, so yeah. much later in the day, it's getting lower. I yeah. then it's too low for me to simply rely on the sun alone to give me the, the recipe that I wanted to light this picture. Therefore, I had to put in the sun at a slightly uh, more of an ascendancy in time rather than the descendancy in time, keep the angle about right and give me the shape I wanted. So I'm still lighting in the same di fundamental direction, but slightly lower than the sun, well, slightly higher, should I say, than the sun yeah, lighting sun. a subject like this. And I want you to notice the subtlety of the light on the kid's hair. All the highlights on the top of the head are maintained. If you get a disproportionate amount of light as a backlight or a hair light hitting a subject, you will cause yourself no end of problems. So this is just about proportion of light. Um, and yet again, I know that her, uh, as I see it, her arm... That is another six foot there. by four foot. I use my reflector so I bounce the light from, for example, the ones on the right hand side, down onto the one that's on the floor to throw some light back up into her face. And the other two there are just, again, to give me a much broader light source. And next. Well, again, perfect example of using a silver reflector and a black one to cut the light down. I mentioned previously about the feminine result pages. Index with your pages on them and almost half the traffic on the net is video traffic and it is growing. YouTube is not the only big website, there are loads and loads of massive and big websites which are very popular video sh sharing sites and I also use these um, sites to get my website in front of prospects and customers. So the grow is a venue, a hotel in Watford, wedding photographer, some researchers, that is my site and you'll see and notice from, especially from now on, these videos are being indexed on these pages as well. So there's my link, there's my video. Father's Day portrait offer. So those two spots are mine, those two spots for the videos are both coming to me. See how powerful this is. It's free traffic, my friends. Absolutely free. Family portrait, Milton Keynes. Video and my link.
and I'll pick up another image, drag it onto my slide, resize to wherever, whatever I want to do, put the shadow, take this one out. It's pretty much drag and drop. Is that easy? Yeah. Um, resize that again. If I want to add some text, I can type in best photographer in the world. Okay, and I can color it differently. I'm going to make it into white. And what I'll do is uh, range it. Compared to, yeah, so you can see the flexibility. I personally, uh, for all my websites, just concentrate on on Google. So let's have a look at another couple of very quick keywords. Select dog training DVD. So this means somebody is looking to buy a DVD for dog training. Now it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Um, 2,900 people are looking for it. Now if you can get your website in front of 2,900 people, then you have got a good chance of selling a few DVDs to them. This is very relevant to the local search, Dog Training UK. Thanks for your time and watching this presentation. I hope you click on the link below and buy the Masters of Webinar series right now. All the best. This is Uzair Karawala of SF Photo School.